Hello, welcome to Football 360, Australia's best online football program. Coming up, Gustavo Marulanda, the State League's top goal scorer, pops in for a chat. We find out what happened to the Australian Masters team in their quest for World Cup glory in Thailand. And of course, all the highlights from the match of the week between Bayswater and Perth. But first, it's a club whose history goes back 44 years. But for the Western Knights, the club with no home, history right now has no place. Season 2012 is proving to be a tough challenge that nobody could have foreshadowed. Season 2012, just over the halfway mark, not what uh, one would have expected, you, you could say. You're right there, like, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be this hard. Oh, there's a lot of pressure, like, you know, it's, uh, but in saying that, only took over two weeks before the season. And uh, then the exodus of a lot of players since then, like, you know, has uh, left us pretty lean. And, and once players leave and stories start going about, uh, it's hard to attract players. Why commit to such a challenging role? Well, I'm a, I'm a football person who can't play anymore and I love the game, I love to get involved. And Western Knights come in and offered me the job, like, you know, and I wanted to get back into the job, so I took it. Any coach will tell you, if you've not got the players, you can't do it. That, that's the bottom line. And uh, we, we've got, we had a very good nucleus of players, but then they decided to jump ship and it's left us bare, like, you know, and we're, we're, we're bringing in some young boys who are trying their best, but they're just not ready. It's a completely different game when you're, when you're battling for, uh, you know, against relegation sort of thing, so. Is Divi 1 entered your minds? It's popped up in, in everyone's uh, conversations every now and again, but it's something that we need to get out of our minds and really just strive to maybe push for a top five spot. Everyone knows we lost a lot of good players and we have a lot of injuries. And also with this issue we got with the ground that doesn't help us as well 44 years history hey you don't let that go is division one a scenario no. that you're looking at no no we stay in the premier league what's it going to take to uh, re-emerge as a leader we need quality players we need uh, players that play with passion and unfortunately, we've not got that at the minute. Is there enough of them coming through the ranks at junior level within WA? No. No, there's not. And I can't, I, and I can't answer, uh, give you an answer for that. I don't think the quality is there. Come round 22, where will the Western Knights be? We'll be mid-table. It's not the goal. If we had to win all the games for here in, who, 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 say, who knows what might happen? You know what I mean? You never know. The way everybody's beating each other, we could end up in the top five. You know what I mean? You never know. You never say never. We'll battle right to the end. And there's no doubt about that, you know. And best of luck to the Western Knights this weekend who hosts Floriot at home. And Floriot, just one of three teams on top of the ladder at the moment. Bayswater City on top thanks to a superior goal difference. And the man they can thank is their Colombian marvel, the goal scoring machine, Gustavo Marulanda, who joins me now. Gustavo, welcome to Football 360. You must be very, very happy. Th uh, 18 goals in 13 matches. What's the secret to your success so far? Uh, well, yeah, obviously I'm very happy. And the secret is uh, you have to look at the midfield we've got. I've got a uh, uh, very good service from the midfielders. I have to thank my teammates because they made me look good. That's that's secret. I'm always uh, uh, focused every game to score goals. All right, and just on a personal note, uh, any uh, A-League prospects? They've been touted around at the start of the season. Now that you're in blistering form, any word, Gustavo, as to what's happening come the end of the season? Is does an A-League contract loom? Well, so far I still focus on base water. Mm, I don't think it's nothing coming up. I just keep doing my, my best and just focus in, in the league, that's all. All right, well, best of luck to you and best of luck to the team this season. Just if uh, Mauro can just squeeze in for me. Mauro, you must be uh, happy uh, sitting. It's a three-horse race. You're on top, as I said, uh, thanks to that superior goal difference. Uh, you must be a happy man. It's not a three-horse uh, race here. It's a seven-horse race uh, with nine games to go. I'm happy. Um, 
I'm, um, I know that we got quality, enough quality to, to go all the way, but at the same time there are other teams that have the same quality that we have and the, the letter is there to show us that we're not alone there. We don't have the two teams with us and just a bunch of other teams uh, with two or three points behind. So it's, um, I'm happy but um, in confidence. But nothing's done so far. All right, well, we'll catch up again, hopefully, uh, around at round 22 and see what does unveil in season 2012. Well, Bayswater did play Perth at the weekend, as you just mentioned. With all the match highlights, here's your commentator, Ashley Morrison. Round 13 of the All Flag State Premier League saw top of the table Bayswater City play host to arch rivals Perth. Perth created the first opening of the match following a patient build up. Niederberger laid the ball off to Naglieri, who played a pinpoint pass out onto the right to debutant Seb Oyet. He squared back to Naglieri, but unfortunately for Perth, his side footed his shot the wrong side of the post. In the 12th minute, it was Bayswater who opened the scoring. Gustavo Cataccioni turned K, and with the outside of his foot found Ross Cosgrove, whose cross picked out the unmarked Cataccioni, who made no mistake from five yards. Within a minute, the Perth defence was caught napping again. Turnbull clipped a free kick to Cataccioni, who failed to control it first time, but the ball fell to Cisco Jacquera, who found the back of the net. In the 57th minute, and now down to 10 men, having won possession, Perth gave the ball straight back to Bayswater. Cataccioni fed Giron Maralunda, who passed it back. The Perth defence backed off, and Cataccioni had time to set himself, pick his spot, and find the back of the net for Bayswater's third. And he shared his delight with Bayswater's loyal fans. In the final minute, Perth conceded a needless free kick, born out of frustration, and then they switched off. John Kearney showed quick thinking and played a well-weighted pass to substitute David Cisse, who shot past Dunn and into the far corner to make it 4-0 to Bayswater and add the icing on the cake. In other results, Florida Athena recorded the biggest victory of the season, knocking in nine against last-placed ECU Joondalup. Armadale secured a one-all draw with Balcata. Sterling Lions scored twice in the last four minutes to come from behind and steal all of the points against Bunbury Forum Force, while the Western Knights were unlucky to miss out on a share of the spoils against Inglewood United. Bayswater's win over arch-rivals Perth sees them on top of the league on goal difference from Florida Athena and Inglewood United, with Sorrento a point behind them. Joondalup remain bottom with Bunbury Forum Force three points above them. This week's fixtures see another tough day at the office for Joondalup as they face informed Bayswater City. Perth will look to get back to winning ways but face a difficult game against Sorrento, while Armadale and the Western Knights will look to continue their improving form and throw a spanner in the works for Inglewood and Florida Athena respectively. Addiction starts with a choice. Earlier this month, we featured the players from Australia who headed to Thailand to compete in the Masters World Cup. Well, the boys are back. Sad news is they didn't win the tournament, but they still managed to bring back some silverware. Football 360 caught up with team coach and former Socceroo, Gary Maraki. We were in Bangkok this year and it's fantastic. The stadiums that we played on uh, we're first class. An excellent run tournament uh, in very hot and humid conditions. Uh, we actually got the bronze medal this year, which was a bit better than last year. Iran were the strongest team. They beat Thailand in the final. We lost to Thailand in the semis, which meant we played off for third and fourth. And we beat Taiwan at 9.30 on a Saturday morning after playing at uh, seven o'clock the night before. So it was a pretty tough week. You know, a highlight for us was we were playing against Scotland, which had a couple of guys that we knew from Western Australia, and we equalised in the last minute of the, of the game to give us a chance to get into the semis. So uh, that was probably you know, a highlight, because we played against uh, 
teams coached by Paul Donnelly, who is a friend of mine from uh, years back when he played for Perth Azuri in WA. And Alan McTurk is their coach as well, and he uh, played for Ingwood Kiev. I think we were a very good team uh, overall, and uh, everyone really contributed. The 50-year-olds were excellent. Craig Navin uh, did really well in midfield for us in an unaccustomed position that he would normally play in his old days. You know, we're looking to strengthen our team uh, you know, with the younger age group because everyone's getting a year older. We've been going five years now and we really need some quality uh, younger players. I mean 38 year olds because uh, that's where Iran was very strong. At the end of the day we got the bronze medal, we came back from a goal down and Rene de Koning scored a cracking goal to win the game for us and uh, I think we finished on a good note and hopefully we, the guys are hungry to go back next year. WA's football community lost a true gentleman and a legend of the soccer community last week. Lou Ricky passed away peacefully on the 21st of June. Lou gave more than 40 years of service to the game in this state. He was president of East Fremantle Tricolori when it was a great power in WA football and a former president of the Soccer Administration of WA. We at Football 360, on behalf of the entire family at Football West, pass on our deepest condolences to Mr Ricky's family. And on that sombre note, we wrap up another busy episode of Football 360 for this week. You'll catch us again next week. Until then, bye for now.